Stan Jabalisco here um, with the first in a series of videos concerning uh, vacuum tube amplifiers and in particular radio frequency power amplifiers that use vacuum tubes. I would like to start by um, letting you know first of all I'll start by launching my Google Chrome browser my favorite browser in incognito mode and then I will go to my website right here sciencewriter.net visit it and go to books available at Amazon and you will find listed among them teach yourself electricity and electronics fifth edition well this particular book uh, by the way uh, there's the, what the cover looks like of the <clears throat> print edition by the way um, this video is being done in uh, full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution so if you want to take advantage of that but uh, chapter 26 I believe it's well I I don't actually don't remember here's the table of contents of the book we'll scroll down there is an entire chapter devoted to vacuum tubes uh, Electron Tubes, Chapter 29, starting on page 538. And uh, I go into basic tube theory in that particular chapter of that book. So uh, I would strongly recommend or urge you to get a hold of a copy of that book. Now what I'd like to do is show you a website that I have found where you can find a whole lot of power amplifier vacuum tubes. This particular site called Amplified Parts. Just enter the word, enter the phrase Amplified Parts into your Google search engine and it'll take you right here or it's www.amplifiedparts.com. Uh, there are a whole lot of vacuum tubes for sale here. This is probably one of the best places I've ever seen for uh, finding, well not only probably is one of the best places I've ever seen for it, it is one of the best places. With up to 40 watts of plate dissipation, that's a 2A36L6. Now that is a um, apparently a, a, a very common, t uh, was very commonly used, beam power tetrode modeled after the vintage RCA6L6GC backplate. Uh, it uh, it gives a bunch of specifications. It shows some pictures, and one of the neat things about this site is it shows you a whole bunch of whole bunch of pictures of what these tubes actually look like in their physical rendition. There's a venerable old radio frequency power amplifier tube, the 811 or 811A. I remember the 813. This is the 811A uh, for sale also from Amplified Parts. A lot of these uh, vacuum tubes are still manufactured in China. Uh, a lot of things that you can't get in the United States anymore, uh, but there's still a small demand for, the Chinese have taken that up. So that's sort of what these tubes look like. Um, we'll go back to the 811 a site itself and uh, I don't know I guess product specifications uh, well it doesn't have any reviews here but again browse uh, through this uh, particular site and you'll learn a little bit about what these sorts of tubes can do there are other types of tubes available from them here too such as pre-amplifier tubes if you're interested in a low power radio frequency amplifier 12AX7 now that is a very common uh, low power vacuum tube much smaller of course than the 811 this thing is about the size of a thumb drive whereas the 811 is pretty close to the size of a drinking glass uh, small drinking glass <laughs> okay 
So that's uh, basically what I uh, would like to do there is just to introduce you to what these things physically look like and then I will get into some tube theory in the next videos and in particular deal with radio frequency power amplifiers. Stan Gibalisco signing off from the Nerd Cave, the Black Hills of South Dakota. 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long.